The following is a YouTube-based audio production, brought to you by J.E. Realize. 10 Eurovision songs you need to know to be a Eurovision fan. Okay, make that 11. First up, Waterloo from ABBA. You are not a Eurovision fan if you haven't even listened to it. It's been everywhere. You have no excuse. It goes without saying, what are you even doing here if you haven't heard of ABBA? Okay, but seriously. I'm not putting Waterloo on this list because it's so often cited as a Eurovision example that I don't even need to mention it. However, there are a few others that, especially if you're an American, you should probably educate yourself on as you're exploring the Eurovision fandom. Let's begin. Now, Blue de Pinto de Blue by Domenico Munduño. You may have heard of this as VOLARE! While this song scored third in its contest, it became a worldwide hit and covered by many artists. Because of that part of the song alone, VOLARE! Eurovision hosts use this as an easy way to get the audience singing a Eurovision song during song breaks without much cringe. Poupé de Cire, Poupé de Son by France Gall. At some point in making this list, I decided I should have at least one song per decade, but I blanked on which 60s song to put here. I thought about putting Congratulations by Cliff Richard or Puppet on a String here, but you'll see later that it didn't work out. I contemplated between this and La La La, the winner of Eurovision 1968, but I decided to go with this one. I'm sorry, I don't know my 60s. I haven't even listened to a Beatles song. I just chose this because it was relatively well known. Hallelujah by Milk and Honey. Another song that I had no idea whether to add or replace with another song. While as a Spanish speaker, I would have liked to add Eres Tú to this list, I decided it doesn't get as many modern Eurovision shoutouts. But that could be because Israel hosted the event three times in the past 50 years, while Spain hosted exactly zero. This is one of those thematic peace songs Eurovision prides itself on. You want to find a secondary message from Eurovision, it's through peace songs. There's this, there's Germany's 1982 entry, there's another song in this list I'll get to, it's just expected. Granted, sometimes a country chooses to send in a peace song to distract from recent events involving their country, but hey, this is your vision, let's put that on the back burner for a moment. Hold Me Now by Johnny Logan. How am I not going to mention the only two-time winning performer of the Eurovision Song Contest? Johnny Logan competed for Ireland in 1980 and 1987, winning both times, and even wrote the Irish entry for 1982, which also won. This song was his 1987 entry, and it holds up well, but it's partly due to Johnny's status. Love Shine a Light by Katrina and the Waves I was a bit hesitant to put this on the first 10 list of its kind, but considering the 2020 Eurovision tribute show was called Europe Shine a Light, I decided it would be stupid not to include it. This is the only British entry I included on this first list, because while Britain sent in a wide range of classics such as Boom Bang a Bang, Congratulations by Cliff Richard, Save Your Kisses for Me, and Making Your Mind Up, that would heavily bias this list toward Britain. It's better to have one of each country, but this arguably was Britain's finest hour before the 2000s hit. This song is timeless and can be appreciated from any era. Unfortunately, the UK just doesn't know how to do this anymore. Dancing Lasha Thumbai by Virka Serduchka. To an outsider, this song is as weird as it gets, but here's the thing. To Eurovision fans, this is a hallmark of the 2000s. It missed the gold medal, but Virka is more well known by Eurovision fans than not only the winner of the same contest, but both winners from Ukraine. Plus, she's got that infectious personality, which explains why she pops up as a special guest every so often. That personality shined through in the song, making it a Eurovision classic. Plus, rumor has it that the song has some political commentary, but you didn't hear it from me. Fairy Tale by Alexander Rybak. And now for the obligatory fiddler moment. Wait, I used that line before. If you make this song so good my sister loves it unironically, I think you got a winner. This wasn't the first time Norway won with a violin, which ironically means violins is the answer. But this time, the melody had, gasp, lyrics, oh fragile day! This was an easy entry song in the contest, keeping it simple with good music and a good performance. No wonder it blew the competition away, as well as the dancer's shoes. Look out below! Euphoria by Lorraine. I did say no more than one song per country, but I also said I didn't count Waterloo because it transcended mandatory education. This had a good package of an infectious dance beat with a passionate and emotive singer, and that usually nets you a lot of points. 
Nothing much to say about this song besides that it's good and it won, but sometimes people can just appreciate a good pop song, and Sweden does provide. Rise Like a Phoenix by Conchita Verst. If there was any song that shows what the Eurovision community is about these days, it's this song. Originally, it wasn't expected to do well, but the live performance of the song sold it hard into first place. But the most important part is, the singer is a cross-dresser and no one cares. Except for Turkey, but hey, they're not in the contest anymore, so screw it. Eurovision is, at its core, a safe place. And while many Eurovision participants come in and show disdain for some of the participants' lifestyles, I'm looking at you, RMMP3, Eurovision fans generally take in people of all ages, over 16, colors, sexes, religions, orientations, whatever. The human experience is something to revel in, and that's why a lot of Eurovision fans stand Conchita, even if she decides to go masculine. Amar Pelos Dois by Salvador Sobral. For this last song, I could have chosen maybe Toy or Fuego because TikTok, but really, it's too soon to know if any of these, this song included, will be remembered in future Eurovision. But hey, this broke records. This song did not fit at all in modern Eurovision, and I did say it would have fit in well in the 1950s. That being said, it was a much needed break from some of the glitz and glamour of so many Eurovision entries before. It was just one person in an oversized suit singing in the middle of the crowd. It's good to get a break in now and then, and as such, this song was the highest scoring Eurovision song in modern history. And that's it for now. There are hundreds more songs out there, so until I set up another list, I encourage you to seek them out. And yes, there will be another video. Sorry if you're a Eurovision fan and don't see any songs you find the most notable on this list. If so, feel free to leave suggestions. This has been J.E. Realize. Happy Eurovision Week. Sure, there's no Eurovision this week, but don't let that stop you. Do the feedback thing. Like, comment, subscribe, or dislike. It's not like liking or subscribing gets me Bitcoin. Follow me on my Twitter at J.E. Realize. I'll see you next time. This concludes our YouTube-based audio production. I hope you enjoy, and I wish you farewell.